Although we have a phenomenal road to the Derby weekend, we have three 50-pointers. We do have a 10-pointer, and I have to say it was very difficult to handicap. It was the hardest race of the weekend for me. Um, all weather in Turfway Park, those words you don't come here come out of my mouth too often. Um, I find it very difficult to handicap that track. Um, and this is a 10-pointer with a lot of horses that I don't think are really pointed to the Derby um, by any means. We do have a field of 12 with two also eligibles going 1 and 1 16th of a mile in Turfway. Um, that'll be a night track, so it'll be an 8-14 first post. Uh, 8-14 post time. Um, I'll start us off with the one here. Um, the one golden eye. Bit of a long shot, but... Has an opportunity to clear the field from the inside off the break. Has one of two turns before and working with Maury's top horse, Samurai Princess, in the morning. So there is a, a chance that this horse could be live. It could be a live long shot. Um, this track really has no bias at all. If you look at it, it's broken down. We're at 34%, 33%, and 31%. So it's really broken down pretty evenly. There's not much I can see in terms of how it's actually going to play. You see that a lot with all weather tracks. There should be no bias. That's a point sort of a point of an all-weather track. It takes that bias out. Uh, but Golden Eye, the number one horse, is going to be a very big long shot, and I'm not very interested. What do you think of the two and the three? Yeah, so I agree with you just on a high level. that This race is brutal. Um, it, w handicapping this, it, it's almost like you got to differentiate between the horses that are here for derby points and here because this is their derby. Um, the number two, Rich Strike, I actually don't hate this horse. I think he's a sneaky long shot play in this field. So he, I'm a big fan of horses doing anything for the second time, you know, so this horse got on synthetic for the first time in his career in a stakes race last out. Uh, he was coming from the back of the pack. He passed a couple of horses and uh, finished just beaten three lengths, uh, only about a length back from second place though. So I, I thought that was an honest effort. Uh, I like the fact that he got that run under his belt and he now has a chance to get a feel for the surface. Uh, another you know, key kind of second angle I always like is when a horse uh, pairs a two-year-old top as a three-year-old or pairs a previous top. So you know, this is a horse that's making his third start off the layoff, and he just kind of paired up with his best race as a two-year-old. So I think he's sitting on a forward move here. I don't know if that forward move is really going to be good enough to get the job done, but I do think he's going to move forward and he will outrun his odds to say the very least. So that's a horse that I think could be usable at a huge price. Number three, uh, La Beliza Negra. So this is a horse that at the very least should play a pace factor, right? Stretching out from six furlongs to a mile and a 16th. This horse has legitimate sprint speed, is your most likely leader in this race. Uh, but there is other speed to contend with. Uh, the one horse, Golden Eye, the eight horse race. There's a number of others that are going to be uh, forwardly placed here. I think that's asking a little too much of this horse too soon. Uh, go from maiden company into uh, stakes while stretching out to two turns uh, just a bit too much too early but if you think the horse can really get that loose and uh rep or improve off that last race then i suppose uh, he's not in here without a chance what'd you think of number four stolen base I think you, you said something before and it, it resonates very well with me and that some horses, this is their derby and some horses are on the road to the derby. Um, I think the four horse here, Stolen Base, is a road to the derby horse. This maker horse is coming here to get points. Um, horse will be closing from the cloud. Decent pace signed on here. The pace report's showing from HRN that this could be a little bit melty. The all weather has allowed you to close from the clouds this year. We have seen 28% off more than four lengths at first call. Um, last up on the turf, Third at Sam Houston Ladies' Day, transfers well to the all-weather. 25% jockey takes them out. Um, the one thing for me, and you've heard me say it before, I hate betting short-priced closers. You can't teach speed. People, Horses out front, it's a lot easier for a horse to hold on than for a horse to close from the clouds, um, especially in a big field like this. I'm going to probably take a pass on the horse. Uh, but moving on to the five horse, on thin ice. Another deep closer. That drops from Stapes Company to finish second here last time out in a mile distance. Um, adding this 116th is going to be huge for this horse. If this horse had another 100 feet last time, it wins. Um, Led Darrow's for Cassie. Does okay in stakes races. Uh, I'd like to see this horse a little bit closer than it was last time. It was about seven or eight, eight, seven or eight off last time. I'd say like it's a little bit closer. But this is one of those one-run closures that's going to make a shot at it here. Um, when they do make that weird camera angle as we see at Turfway Park, um, you can never tell how close the horses really are at the top of the stretch. So I hope this horse can get a little bit closer, have the opportunity to make that one run, and possibly nip them at the line. Uh, what did you think of the six and seven? Yeah, the number six, Legendary Lore. Uh, this is a horse I'm going to be taking a, a pass on. 
uh, it just seems like he hasn't really improved ever since, you know, really September. He sort of just kind of ran the same race. His figures aren't really improving as much as I would like to see. And really had every chance to win last time as the odds on favorite and really could manage no better than third and what was a blanket finish uh, for a four horse photo. I generally don't like to see those four horse photos that, that tells me more often than not that there wasn't any standouts and it wasn't a high quality race. So Bill Morey's doing excellent at Turfway. He does get his first call jock here and you might get a good price. You're not going to get odds on that's for sure, but that's a horse that I, I can't really support in this kind of a race. Number seven, dropping G's. So he was one of the horses that was in that four horse photo. And truthfully, if I was going to take one, it might be dropping G's out of that uh, optional claiming race back on February 11th. This horse was the widest of all that day. He was four wide around both turns. And I thought he launched a slightly premature move. He took over the lead at the top of the stretch and looked like he was absolutely gone, but got a little bit tired late and got nailed to wire by a couple of runners. I didn't lose by much. If I was going to take one horse out of that four horse photo, it would be dropping G's, but truthfully, I'm not sure that I want to use uh, anybody out of that race. That takes us to the eight race. What do you think of that horse, Andrew? Well, going back to that four horse photo, I have to say, um, I, I would agree with you. The uh, the seven here is probably the horse I would have used. I thought it was bad timing by the jockey. I'm um, watching that replay over and over again. About moved just a little smidge too soon. About four more seconds would have been a little bit better. Uh, but looking at a race here, the eight horse has done nothing wrong. Like do nothing wrong to me. Two for four lifetime. All four starts in the super. Uh, one a mile. One of the stakes mile here. Brad Cox. Um, had the horse, you know, tuned up as you can, as you know, he's definitely looking for derby points. He has, you know, looking for to get another, to get a horse in that gate. Um, horse gets blinkers for again for the second time. Seems like it stayed focused last time it got that, got out to the front. I think the horse has an opportunity here to not necessarily go with the, I think there's going to be a little bit of cheap speed up in front. It's going to go early. Um, but I think a horse can stalk maybe one or two off, um, stay focused and really just run him down. Um, I will say this is going to be a live, uh, a nice priced horse. Um, that should be live. Moving on to the number nine, OP Firecracker. Horse loves to come up from off the pace. Had some luck at Churchill Downs with some pretty big mounts and some nice races uh, for, for, for decent purses. But uh, the Lone Star to Turfway was a fourth behind a race. The horse I just spoke about, the eight. Um, nothing sticks out to me. Uh, this horse is ready and fits here. Um, the, there's nothing really in the works that really shows me they're working with a good workmate partner or this horse is ready to fire. Um, this horse is going to be a toss for me. That moves us uh, to the outside here where it's very difficult to win at Turfway Park. Uh, what do you think of the 10 and the 11? Number 10, Tis the Bomb, is almost certainly the best horse in this field, but I hate this spot for this horse. I, I, I hate when I see connections that get a really nice turf horse and just repeatedly try to find a way to sneak into the derby gate and the horse's development pattern gets all thrown off. I'm not pretending to know more about horses than Kenny McPeak. I certainly don't. But this horse ran, got beat 20 lengths last out at the Holy Bull. It doesn't seem to really love the dirt. It seems to be an excellent turf horse. I mean, ran a fantastic second to modern games in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And yes, synthetic tends to play more like turf than it does dirt, but after that absolute no-show in the Holy Bull, I am not excited to go and support this horse at what is going to be a very short price. This is a horse that I'm going to have to see him prove it to me before I go and bet him. But if you do think he's going to, you know, that he just didn't care for the track at Gulfstream and you really think he's the same, you know, horse on the synthetic as he was on the turf, then I absolutely understand anybody who wants to bet this horse. But for me at a very short price, uh, I'm going to have to let this one prove it to me before I uh, go back to the well on him today. Number 11, Bloodline. So this is a horse that is really interesting in here. Uh, I, I do like this horse quite a bit. Uh, this is another one of the Brad Cox entrants in here. And this is the one that actually gets uh, the jockey that I would say Brad Cox uses you know, most often when coming up to Turfway or at the fairgrounds. So this horse ran a pretty good second at Houston in the Texas Turf Mile. Uh, he did get nailed late by a Steve Asmussen horse, uh, Red Run, but he was well clear of the horse that ran third and stolen base. This is a horse that can kind of run any way you need him to. I mean, he closed from pretty far back last out, uh, two starts back. He was just off the pace. So my guess is that he tries to settle somewhere in the mid-pack. 
I do have some concerns about how much ground he's really going to lose going around these turns here from the far outside post because he's probably not going to make the lead and he's probably not going to be at the back of the pack. So he does have a risk of getting strung out pretty wide. Uh, this is a horse that I, I do think could certainly win this race, but as one of the shorter prices on the board, I, I don't know how excited I would be. About him. I think that takes us to the 12 grail. So what are your thoughts there? Grail. I mean, to be honest with you, if this horse wasn't in the 12, I'd be a lot more interested. Um, Adam and Walsh hit a 20% rate. Um, horse comes from the turf. Seems to be a turf horse to me, as you said before. Turf horse is looking for somewhere else to run. But Walsh is 31% when you look at turf to all weather. Um, so there's definitely transfer as well there. The outside post is going to be a hell of a burden. Horse has been working in the morning exclusively with a horse by the name of Delightful Moment who broke its maiden on Monday at Mardi Gras Day um, at Fairgrounds. Or Tuesday, sorry, Mardi Gras Day at Fairgrounds. So definitely a, a horse that's been working with very good horses, with a good horse. Um, so I'm interested to see what's going to happen here. I just think this outside post is way too much for it to ask. Um, I think I would really have been much more interested in this horse if we were inside of the eight. Um Brings us to one of the AEs, uh, both AEs you and I spoke about, Caleb, not necessarily interested in. Amic uh, amicable. Um, I don't know if this AE draws in yet, but I don't know why the horse is here. Outclass, too much speed, um, outpace. If he draws in, complete toss for me. If he does draw in, I hope somehow somebody lays some money on him and uh, we can get some pool fillers. But I don't see this 13 AE having any opportunity. What did you think of the final AE, the 14? Yeah, I, I sort of treat them the same way. Uh, I don't think either one really has a chance in here, uh, even if they draw in. So I, I don't, you know, Amicable too slow, a Winter Sun too slow, and, you know, probably needs the lead and won't get it. So you know, not neither horse do I think have a chance, and I wouldn't spend too much time really digging into the form on those two. So looking at my top pick here, I'm going to be looking at that eight, which I previously spoke about a race. Cox is looking for derby points. It's very clear he's looking for a derby horse. Um, he's trying to pick it up here. He points it to this race. Um, horse is going to be tuned up for this race, as a lot of the times his are. Has won on the surface before. I like the pace set up here. I think he gets that stalking trip this time. Let's the cheap speed go quite a bit and just... You know, stalks outside, maybe two or three off the lead, gets to the home stretch, downshifts, runs by him. Um, I think this is a race is going to be won from somebody on the on or near the lead, in my opinion, how the pace looks to me. Um, and I think this is the best of all those horses. Who is your top pick? Well, I went the opposite direction, uh, Andrew. I, I took a deep, deep closer as my top pick. Number four, stolen base. I think this horse has carried some extremely classy company with the bourbon and then the Breeders Cup juvenile turf. Um, it was, was well beaten by Tis the Bomb in uh, those races by you know a length or two, but I'm not sure that Tis the Bomb is quite the same horse he was as a two-year-old. And I do think that Stolen Base has uh, moved forward from those races. Uh, he ran a good race last out in that Texas turf mile. And Turfway Park is an incredibly tricky track to ride. And I don't think there's a better jockey in the country at riding Turfway Park than uh, Gerardo Corrales. He is just outstanding at this track. So I love the fact that this is the mount that he ends up getting here. I think he's going to time his move a little better than what this horse has been getting. I think he'll get into the race a little bit earlier. Uh, and I think that people might be scared off by some of the deep closing running lines and shy away to some of the other horses. So I'm hoping that you do get uh, something in the ballpark of you know, seven to two or four to one here. Well, when talking about closers, I will never bet a short price closer, but I will play a long shot closer. So my, my long shot here is going to be a closer um, in case this does melt. I, on thin ice, added distance is going to help here. As I said last time, lost by, you know, 100 feet would have been there. Um, does not have to improve much from the last race to get the win here. A little bit of a step forward, gets right there. Um, Cassie has been colder than ice, so that makes me a little nervous. Um, but I think this horse does step forward and has a nice shot here. Um, I'm definitely going to be keying this horse in my trifecta as I think this is a horse that, if it doesn't win, does run up underneath passing tiring horses late. Uh, who did you pick for your long shot? Yeah, for my long shot, I'm going back to, I think, the first horse I talked about, which was number two, Rich Strike. Uh, also a closer, as we kind of mentioned. So this horse uh, ended up getting dropped all the way down to maiden claiming 30. We got claimed immediately out of that race. Uh was immediately shuffled back into an 80,000 optional cl uh, claiming race and ran well in that race. I mean, he then tackled some stakes company, cashed a couple of checks with some minor awards. So I definitely think that uh, that was a really shrewd claim there. 
by uh, you know Red TR Racing and Eric Reed. So I think this is the horse that you know, he gets to save some of the ground. He's going to get an honest pace in front of him. And I think he's really sitting on that forward move that I talked about, that third off the layoff here, uh, you know, getting that you know second start after pairing his top last out. I think he's going to move forward. Uh, his last couple of works have been very sharp. And I think that uh, second time in the synthetic, he's going to be a little more mature and understand the track a little bit better. So Rich strikes a horse that I think uh, may be more likely to run underneath, but as a horse that I do think has a chance. I love the long shot pick. I have to say, I've heard for years from you trying something for the second time. Um, you said it again right there, and, and the horse also has a matching top. So I, good opportunity there to, to get some value. Um, we have a field of 12 here at Turfway Park this coming Saturday, 8-14 post time. Two also eligibles. We'll see if they draw in. Going one and one sixteenth of a mile on the Turfway all-weather surface. It's going to be cold out there. Uh, horses going for 10 points towards the road to the Derby.